Stuck in the past with no way home. Gotta do something fast so I'm not alone. Gonna bring you straight to me. Through time and space to a face to face. Gonna bring you straight to me. Hey guys, Alex Khan here, the Prince of Macedon, and uh, I'm going to do a Q&A video, and I want to preface this by saying I wanted to answer as many Q&A questions as I could. A lot of these questions are going to be repeat questions. Um, but I feel like if you ask a question, I want to try to take the time to answer as many as I can. So that said, I'm probably going to miss quite a few. I do apologize for that. Um, but there's a lot of questions, so this video could take like up to an hour or so. Uh, be prepared. If you're bored of uh, Q&A videos, don't watch this. You're going to be extremely bored to tears. Oh, also, a uh, little announcement. I'll be making a, uh, an appearance at TupeloCon, which is located in Tupelo, Mississippi. And I believe that's next month. So anyways, let's go do some, uh, some Q&A. So, let's see here. I'm just gonna do these in order. And uh, the questions are gonna come from YouTube and Facebook. And I do have a Facebook page. It's, it's uh, Alex Khan, and you can find my picture. YouTube questions first. This first one comes from Fristy the Frog. He says, I know you don't play recent Total Wars, so what should they do to improve, or what should they do or improve on so you can come back to play them? Now, honestly, I have played every Total War game and DLC that they sent me. Uh, the problem is, I have this email from the CA where they said, somehow my email got deleted from their email list. That's why for, what, two years, I haven't gotten anything from them. And I call slight BS on that because I've been telling my contacts at the CA that I haven't been getting any of their, their emails, like, during that time for two years. And then now that they're finally getting back to me telling me what happened, it just doesn't make any sense. So one person said, oh yeah, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry that you've been off the emails for two years. Sorry about that. And, uh... We'll add you for the next historical game. And then later on, this, uh, this new uh, community coordinator came, came about and he said that if anyone has ever talked poorly of the CA or of its employees, then we are banned or barred from uh, getting uh, content from them in the future. So basically, I kind of got blacklisted before I got blacklisted. Uh, it was, a, it was a bunch of BS. I have all those emails, by the way. So what should they do to improve? Well, I think if the CA wants to improve their gameplay, they need to go back and play their original games. Well, not the original games, but go back and play Realm Total War and Medieval 2. I've talked to these uh, people who work for CA, and almost all of them have said they have never played Realm Total War and Medieval 2, so they don't know just how awesome the, game were, the games were before they came on board. So maybe if they force them to play these games, uh, they would know, you know, what they're up against, and then they can improve the gameplay. Because uh, back then, I really felt like I was commanding my troops. I felt like I was in control of them. And uh, when I play these newer Total War games, there's such a huge disconnect with my units and myself that once I, I put them into combat, they kind of just get stuck there, and then it kind of just blobs up. And there's really the, the sense of maneuvering is, it, it's dropped, it's, it's lost in the newer games, at least for me. So uh, maybe I never got used to it, but I have tried out every new Total War game, at least the ones that they sent me. So they need to make these uh, Total War games seem less arcade-like and bring it back to Rome Total War, bring back bigger maps, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, that would be a start, and then secondly they would have to add me back to their email list. And, yeah, let's not go more into that. So the second one comes from Kadim02. Why don't I play the newer Total War, Total Wars, just curious, and maybe do some campaigns? So uh, that's another repeat right there. I 
I have played the newer Total War games. I played all of the games that the CA has sent me. Um, but because they blacklisted me, or no, because they forgot to, they forgot to add me to their email list, I haven't got any of their Total War games. And once I complain about it, they blacklisted me for complaining about it. Um, maybe do some campaigns? I won't do campaigns for Total War. I'm all about the, uh, the multiplayer battles for Total War. If I wanted to play campaign, I'd play a superior game like the ones made by Paradox Interactive. I loved Imperator Rome. Great, uh, great campaign, uh, a game. And it's all played in real time, so it's very awesome. Third question comes from Sky Angel PR. Why don't I play Rome Total War mods? Uh, back in the day, when I was playing, it was a lot harder to install Total War mods. Um, but when Steam came about, the uh, Total War mods were a lot easier to use. Uh, that said, it's still way harder to find a, uh, a modded Total War game multiplayer. Because usually when people play mods online, they already have a specific person they want to play against, or a specific community they play against. So if I just jumped in there, they would go, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have enough room for you. So basically what it boils down to, it's inconvenient. That said, I have played several uh, Total War mods. Um, you can look up my, um, I think I have a Total War uh, mods playlist. Not very big at all, but I have played I have played them. Purple Donut 101. Prince Macedon, what do you do for work? And what is an average day in your life like? So uh, for work, I like to, uh, to clock in. And then after like seven or eight hours, I like to clock out and then uh, get some money from it, and then I'll go home. And then once I get home, I like to uh, I like to eat, relax, and I haven't read any books recently, but I like to go back to reading, but I also like watching uh, uh, TV shows and movies. And if I have time, maybe I'll, I'll play a, a video game. I'm, I'm slowly getting back into uh, gaming, but I've been pretty active on my X, a Prince of Macedon X, which is my vlog channel. If you like cars or RC cars or travel or any of that kind of stuff, convention videos, uh, that's the channel to go to. I've been pretty active on that one. Uh, Jorge Castro, what are my ambitions regarding this channel going forward? Also, any other historical time periods that I've been interested in lately, besides ancient times? Um, so my ambitions for my uh, for my gaming channel. Uh, baby steps, basically. I want to uh, get back to uploading at least two or three videos a week. There was a time when I was uploading one video every single day. Man, that was exhausting and time-consuming. So, maybe someday I can get back to that, but as for now, I want to get back to uploading at least two or three videos a week. And I want to do it with the uh, game that I started off with, and the game that's still my favorite, which is Rome Total War. But I'll play other games like I always do, but Rome Total War is always going to be my staple. Um, the CA hasn't produced any uh, games that can replace it, unfortunately. So I'm pretty happy playing Rome 1. Oh, and what's an average day in my life like? So I kind of hinted at it. I like, you know, uh, eating, relaxing, uh, video games. Um, lately, I don't know if you noticed, I'm kind of out of shape. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to go back to my old habits of waking up at like 4 or 5 in the morning to go exercise. So. Uh, Eventually, my new routine is going to be waking up at like 4 or 5, exercising, uh, going to work, coming back, and then relaxing. Um, right now, I'm like 155 pounds, which is way too heavy for myself. My natural weight is, I think, 128. So I'd like to get down to like 130 eventually. Because it was at that weight where I could, you know, play soccer, uh, go for jogs, and not get too tired. Okay. Oh yeah, he had another question. Any historical time periods I've been interested in lately, besides ancient times? Um, well, if you guys uh, know me, I have answered this a few times, but I also like the uh, the uh, some other time periods. Like, I love World War II history. I love uh, Napoleonic Wars, the American Civil War. Um, but I was actually recently uh, reading this book about uh, moonshining. <laughs> so I guess. Uh, uh, mid early 1900s I was reading about what people would do to their cars to make them faster and uh, easier to to uh, to get away from the law as they smuggle a moonshine uh, but yeah I, I, I still love uh, uh, reading I just haven't done it lately um, there is one book that I have been 
uh, checking out, but this is back to ancient history. It's a Plutarch's Lives. So every so often, you know, I'll just go, hey, I want to, you know, brush up on my, let's see, Demetrius or King Pyrrhus or whoever, Flaminius. So I like the way Plutarch writes about these guys. Nowadays, you can find a lot more scholarly um, research into these guys. Overman asks, which key mappings do I use for my camera control? I'm not quite sure, but you can see right here, this is, these are my camera controls for Rome Total War. So Luca Scipio 77 asks, will I make a video of Mountain Blade Bannerlord soon? Um, funny story, they um, they actually reached out to me asking if I wanted to, uh, um, you know, get paid to uh, to try this game out early access, and they sent me the the offer. And then I immediately said yes. I would love to try it out. And then after like a few months later, I asked them, "Hey, what happened to the uh, to the Bannerlord offer?" And they told me uh, that they weren't interested in my channel. So it's like, why did they even bother emailing me if they weren't going to be interested? Um, but I, I do love uh, Mountain Blade, so if they did send me the game, uh, I'd totally uh, play it. I, I, that was like one of my uh, popular uh, uploads when I was playing uh, Mountain Blade. I wasn't very good at it though. Okay, Jimmy Def. How many hours do I have on Rome Total War? That's really hard to say, but if you look at my battle number, you can kind of guess what my, bat what my hours are. I think I'm currently on battle number two five five eight so if you uh average my battles at being about 10 15 minutes long then you can kind of guess what my my hours spent on rome to the war are and it's really not that much because a lot of people will play this game for hours but me um even when i was really hitting it i was only playing like one battle a day but when I, when I was really uh, playing Realm Total War, I was only doing like uh, you know, like two or three videos. You know, that was during my heyday where I didn't really uh, upload that much. But it was considered normal for my upload behavior. Um, dun, 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 sorry, I'm trying to find out where I am. All right, George George. I like how he has two names. It is very good to see you are back. Glad to watch your videos. They are great. Thank you. I also like the small phrase at the beginning of the videos that you always add. And question, what is my list of generals? I mean, or he means the list with the best generals in my opinion. Um, how about instead of saying the best generals, which is pretty uh, subjective, let's just tell you what my favorite uh, generals are from antiquity. J just uh, ancient times. So... You know, that, that list can't be argued with, but you can't say, no, that's not your, really your favorite, no way. So, uh, my favorites, obviously, Alexander the Great, uh, Julius Caesar, um, shoot, <laughs> drawing blanks here. Oh, a lot of the Hellenistic uh, Diodaci, like uh, Perseus, Philip V of Macedon, um, oh, I like Philip II, Alexander's father. Oh, King Pyrrhus, of course, King Pyrrhus. Um, Sertorius, Phoreatus, Belisarius. Man, I'd have to look at the list. I mean, I had to look, I had to think what my list would be, but off the top of my head, those are my favorites from antiquity. Okay. Insane Opposite asks, am I a Mountain Blade fan? And if so, am I excited for Bannerlord? Again, um... I am excited for it, but they, uh, the people that reached out to me to try it, they uh, took back their offer. Um, so if they send me the offer again, I'll, I'll say yes again, and hopefully they don't lose interest again. Mr. Holiday asks, what are my plans for the holiday? Oh, sorry. What are my plans for this channel? Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a repeat of my other question and answer, so I'm going to take really small steps to getting my gaming channel active again. So I'm going to try to go back to uploading two or three videos a week and I'm going to start with uh, Rome Total War and then Men of War, maybe Medieval 2, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but I want to get back to uploading two or three videos a week, if possible. The Black Rose asks, 
we'll see, mission fail, ooh, I already failed. Uh, respect for making Rome Total War videos, good to see this game is still being played. So, same with Medieval 2. Uh, edit 1, would you play Third Age Reforged Medieval 2? Um, I, I wouldn't... It's just kind of, uh, it's kind of hard uh, playing mods online. Like when I play a Total War game, I want to play online. So if I download this uh, mod, it'd be hard finding someone to play with. But I'm not opposed to the idea, I'm just opposed to the idea of how difficult it will be to find multiplayer matches. And then you can always say that, yeah, you know, uh, we can arrange a match, but back in the back in my day when I was arranging matches, I failed to arrange the matches successfully because schedules, and I, I was always doing something else, so it's just really hard for me playing mods online. And if yes, could I play with you, Black Rose? Um, so I, I don't really... You know, again, I don't really arrange matches. I appreciate the offer, though. But it's safer for me to say I don't arrange matches, because if I say yes, and then I tell you yes, then you could be waiting forever to play me, and then I don't want to disappoint you in that regard. So I do apologize, but thank you for the offer. And would I do something like a game with my subscribers? I've actually played uh, hundreds of games with my subscribers. Um... I've even had a day where I just went out and go, hey, I'm playing Medieval 2. And I, I've had those days. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm definitely not opposed to play with my subscribers. It's just I don't want to make a schedule and do it because, again, that's... I'll just be disappointing everybody because I probably couldn't make it, you know? So, what, what I like to do when I go online, I just like to randomly log on and then play whoever's there. So I think for me that's safer, and if you're online at the same time as me, then that's great that we can play. Okay, Bob Smith asks, why don't I like Total War Rome 2? So that kind of harkens back to my earlier question, why I don't like uh, the newer games. The newer games, the, the maps are so small. I made a video before comparing a Rome Total War map with a, uh, a newer, I think Warhammer 2 map, and uh, man, it, it was just ridiculous. How much, how much bigger the Rome Total War maps are. It was like five or six times bigger than our Rome Total War 2 maps or Attila, Attila maps. I think what the game designers don't realize is uh, maneuvering is half the battle. But if you start armies right next to each other, there's really no, no time to maneuver and it's, it, it's just, I feel like they're just putting people right next to each other and telling them to fight. That was my problem with the free-for-all mode that I've been pushing for for so long. When they finally implemented it, they kind of uh, half-did it. For free-for-all mode, every army's right next to each other. It's like, there was like no thought put into that. And again, I don't think... You know, actually I don't think it's... I know these uh, people developing these games haven't played the, the earlier Total War games because they never did anything like that. You know, putting armies next to each other and then having that really arcade-like play. It's like, man, make your employees play these games so that they can improve upon them, not start fresh and then make the mistake of not being at least as equally good as the, the original games. So uh, they really should get back to their roots. But I have played Rome too. I played it for almost a year uh, when I had the game. So the, the question's kind of inaccurate. I have played it. I just don't want to play it anymore because of those reasons. Uh, Zap asks, um, are there any newer PC games worth playing in my opinion? Because Zap plays the older games but he can't find any decent games released in the last couple of years that, and he wants to try something new. So I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask but I don't really play that many uh, games to begin with. But uh, I can tell you this much, I loved uh, the Imperator Rome uh, PC game which is a uh, real-time uh, campaign series. This one's set in antiquity. So the only drawback I can think of is that you don't fight your own battles like like in Total War. Uh, but the campaign aspect itself is, I I believe, superior to uh, to a Total War campaign. All right, Sergeant Major Gross asks, "Am I excited for Bannerlord?" <laughs> so that's another repeat. Yeah, I am excited, but they uh, took back their offer for me to to play the game. So again, if they offered me, I would say yes. 
And if they take back their offer and say no, after I said yes, I can be really uh, disappointed. Caleb Nix asks, he says, Awesome Battle Prince, will I continue my Imperator Etruscan campaign? Ooh, I forgot all about that. Man, my Etruscan campaign was so awesome. That was for Imperator Rome. Like, I took over Italy as the Etruscans, which is really hard because you have the Romans right there. And then even in their infancy, the Romans are awesome and they're almost impossible to uh, take out because Rome's allied with so many surrounding uh, factions. If you attack Rome, you're not just fighting Rome, which is harder than itself, but you're also fighting all those little allies. So when I took Italy as the Etruscan, I was very excited, and I was excited to uh, play that campaign more, but I kind of just lost touch with it. I would like to go back, but because I haven't played it in so long, I don't know if I can um, still keep up that momentum. And the fact is, that was played with a previous patch. Uh, there's a much newer patch nowadays, so I might do another campaign for Imperator Rome. But man, I really did enjoy that Etruscan campaign. That was so fun. So many good times with it. Um, Eggy Planet asks, what are my favorite history books? So uh, my favorite history books are the five extant sources on Alexander the Great. So the uh, these are not primary primary sources on Alexander the Great, but they are the oldest existing sources on Alexander the Great. So the works by Quintus Curtius uh, Rufus, the works by Arian. Plutarch, uh, Justin's Epitome, and I feel like there's another one, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not remembering his name. But yeah, there's five extant sources, and my absolute favorite extant source, I can't prepare for this question, is Arian's uh, Anabasis, or sorry, his uh, Campaigns of Alexander, and this is, uh, I consider this to be uh, my Bible for Alexander the Great. And it just talks about his uh, military campaigns. Um, if you want more about his biography from the extant sources, read the other uh, writers like uh, like Plutarch, Quintus Curtius Rufus, or the Justice Epitome, uh, because they write so much better on his on his, on himself. Whereas Arian's uh, campaigns of Alexander focuses on his military battles, which I love. Highly recommend this. I actually read this book. Originally, when I was in the seventh grade, that's also when I, I learned how to play chess, I believe. No, no, no. I learned how to play chess when I was seven. And... Not seventh grade. I also read this book when I was seven. This is not the the same book, but it's the uh, the same book, basically. But I had to go back and buy this again, but I lost my, my original Campaigns of Alexander. Noble Rock. What do I think about game ownership nowadays? Uh, physical versus digital copies, and cloud gaming making a thick appearance. So I'm, I'm very old school. I love, like if I, I really like a game, I'll go out and buy the uh, physical copy of it. Like for, for Rome Total War, I had the Total War collection, or the Total War, I forget what they called it, but it had um, Shogun 1, uh, Medieval 1, it had Medieval 2 on it, which was new, which was the newest game at the time. Um, Rome Total War, Barbarian Invasion for Rome Total War, and also the Alexander Expansion, which is primarily why I bought it. It also had the soundtrack for, for Rome Total War, and then it also had... Well, it had Medieval 2, which again was the newest game at the time. Um, but there's something I, I have to say. If you look at it in the grand scheme of things, it's so much better for the environment. I don't want to sound like a hippie, but it's so much better for the environment if everything goes digital. Instead of producing all these boxes and all these uh, physical CDs, um, in the long term that, that will uh, waste resources. So I, I do applaud the efforts of like Steam to put all these games on digital. It also saves space, like physical space, when you have less things to have. But I myself, if I really like a game, I want a physical copy of the game. And then I will put it in my collector's uh, wall unit or something. What, what, what do you guys think about that? Um, where am I? Oh, JVMP asks, will I address, oh, will I release new merchandise? He would really like a hoodie. Um, I think the only merchandise I've had was, I've had the, the Prince of Macedon socks, um, which a few people actually bought those. I even bought one myself, and I have a pair somewhere, I made a video about it. 
Um, but I also had um, a deal with this one company. They would uh, sell my shirts and my hoodies. I had like one that even looked look like a soccer jersey. I designed the color scheme and I designed the, uh, um, well I, I put the, the placement of everything on there. And unfortunately I don't think a single person bought any of that. And uh, so after a few months of people not buying anything, they just canceled my, they canceled my, my, my order page. And so I was really, uh, I was kind of sad by that, that I really thought people would actually buy it, but no one wanted to buy it. So I would like to get uh, new merchandise, but I, I just fear that no one's going to buy it. Especially nowadays, because people aren't really watching my videos anymore. Uh, but thank you for, thank you for bringing it up. Hey, this is from Iersman96. Hey Prince, has your favorite Total War game changed, or is it still Rome? So yeah, it's it's obviously gonna be Room One, for like forever, <laughs> until another company puts out a a, a real time tactics game set in antiquity. It's always gonna be Room One. The the newer Total War games aren't coming close to it. Um, but that said, I have developed a bigger appreciation for Medieval Two. Because when I first started playing Medieval Two, it was very similar to Room One, although a lot of the mechanics were different. Like especially the cab charges were a lot different than the cab charges in uh, Rome 1. Um, but I wasn't really the biggest fan of medieval history. So over time, I started to like it more, and especially having played the newer Total War games, I definitely appreciated that Medieval 2 was more like Rome 1. So I guess out of necessity, I liked Medieval 2 more uh, given time. This one comes from Francesc Ribes. What's my favorite map in Rome Total War? Um. There was one map I really liked. It was part of a clan map pack, and it was very green, and there were some uh, rolling hills on it, and it looked really pretty. I forgot what that one was called. Um, but for competitive play, the Grassy Flatlands is, uh, for the most part, fairly fair. At least more fair than the other maps. Um, I like the Syrian Flaps, uh, sorry, the Syrian Flats, which is a desert map, which obviously gives bonuses to factions like Egypt. Um, but I like that one a lot too, just because it was very picturesque, if, if you like desert terrain. And um, for free-for-alls, I loved uh, uh, Southwater, because it had, uh, it had some developed structures on it, it had uh, some hills, it had uh, trees where you could hide, and it had some areas that were flat. So it had something for everybody in a free-for-all. It was huge too. And for, um, for siege battles, you can pretty much customize most of those maps to be siege. Um, but I did like Londinium quite a bit. But Londinium had a very small uh, wall to it, but the defenders had a huge advantage because there were hills on there. And then obviously being on top of the hill gave you a significant um, advantage over the attackers who were coming uphill. Uh, ACN Dragon Rider asks, oh, sorry, it's ACN Dragon Rider videos. Back in the day, his name was only ACN Dragon Rider, but he had videos to it, so good for him. So he asked, did I ever play the older RTS games like Red Alert 2 or Age of Empires series? And could we potentially see Age of Empires, especially since the series is making a comeback now on Steam? Less gaming related question, what are some ancient history books that I have read recently? So um, I have uh, made many old videos where I used to play a lot of the old RTS games. I don't think I ever put Command & Conquer on my channel, but I did play Dune, which was made by uh, the same makers of Command & Conquer. It's the same exact uh, uh, game style, although since it's based on Dune, different factions and different units. That game was so fun. Unfortunately, I tried uh, reinstalling that game on my computer. It does not play on, on Windows 7. Um, and uh, Age of Empires Online, they actually, or Age of Empires, I think it was online, they sent me uh, copies of the game to play, and I did, I think I might have made a few videos for that, um, I just couldn't get into it. Um, but I, I do like those old school RTS games, like StarCraft, I loved StarCraft, very, uh, very awesome game. And there's one game I played, uh... Gosh, what was it called? 
But yeah, I, if you look at my playlist, you can see all these old RTS games I used to play. So, uh, obviously I'm not going to roll it out from the future that I'll play more old school RTS games, because they were fun, they really were. Um, one of the first RTS games I played, I'm trying to think, this wasn't your question, but it, I, I just want to answer it anyways. Um, Herzog Sly was the first multiplayer RTS I've ever played. If any of you ever heard of that game, let me know, because I don't know anyone else who's ever heard of that game besides myself. And that was for the Sega Genesis. I loved playing that game. Um, also, Cent Centurion Defender of Rome was another uh, RTS game I used to play back in the day. And that wasn't base building, it was basically go around the map, and then when I have encountered an enemy army, it would switch to the battlefield mode. Those battles are so bad nowadays, but back in the day it was revolutionary. So long before Total War, this game was out. Um, can't really think of anything else right now, but yeah, I, I love old school RTS games. Oh, and less game related, uh, history books. I haven't read any history books recently, except for uh, Plutarch's Lives, which I've read many times in the past. But I like to have it handy so that I can refer to it. But kind of related to that, I, I did buy these books, which I haven't read yet. I actually have a few more books that I haven't read yet, but these are the ones that I found immediately. So I've got this one. Very famous Hellenistic uh, historian, John D. Granger. This one is called The Fall of the Seleucid Empire. And I really do want to read this eventually. I feel like the Seleucids are very... Uh, very interesting uh, kingdom to read about. Like when uh, Antiochus the Great. Oh, that's sorry. That's one of my other favorite uh, military military commanders was Antiochus the Great, the one who lost the big one at Magnesia. Uh, that said, uh, he did as much as he could considering his uh, failing system. You know, the failing system of the uh, the Hellenistic kingdoms. Like he did what he could to stem the rise, but eventually, you know, these Seleucids. They got eaten up from from in, from inside. The Romans were fighting them too. Parthians. It was just not a good thing to be the Seleucids. So haven't read that one yet. Here's another Granger book. This one's called the the Antipater. This one's called Antipater's Dynasty, and that's one of my favorite dynasties to read about. And that's one of uh, you know the successor kingdoms of Alexander the Great. Antipater. Book on Germanicus, which I said I was gonna read, but I never, I never finished it. I've read like like hundred pages, but I never finished it. I'd like to go back and read that. I, I believe at one point the Romans called this guy the Alexander the Great of Romans. <laughs> and then here's a uh, another Granger book, but this one's apparently organized by topic. But it's uh, kings and kingship in the Hellenistic world from 350 BC to 30 BC. So, uh, the kind of topics in this book, let me see. Becoming a king, so I guess how they how they became king. Kings and the gods, so it's probably about the religion. Kings and kings, maybe their relationships with other Hellenistic kingdoms and, and others. Kings, wives and children, kings and palaces, kings and governing, kings and people, kings and cities, kings and war, kings and death, kings and intellectuals, um, kings and Rome. So that would be a very interesting book to read about, or to read, so someday. But yeah, these are not the only books I bought and haven't read. I got so many of these I haven't read yet. Alright, I'm doing really bad on time here. Okay, Prutenia asks, how am I? I'm pretty good, how are you doing, Prutenia? And I'm feeling a lot better now that I've decided to, uh, to improve my health again. You know, I want to get back in shape the way I used to be, um, eat better, um, because for the longest time, for the longest time I was eating pizza and burgers and fast food like every day. So you can tell, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I've, I've got really um, um, out of shape. Um, so I like to get back in shape and be, you know, just be more presentable in public. Okay, Ty Adams asks, when it triggers the Marian reforms, does it trigger it for all factions at once or do they have to trigger themselves individually for each faction? Thanks. I probably should not have put that on here, because I've never played uh, campaigns for Total War, so maybe one of my viewers can answer that question for Ty Adams. Um, I do apologize that I couldn't answer it, but if anyone wants to answer that for Ty, just put uh, to Ty Adams 
and then answer the question for him. Many apologies that I couldn't answer it. Pruny Toes asks, what's the biggest historical inaccuracy, I guess, in Rome Total War? And bonus question, what's the biggest historical accuracy that I think the devs got right? Ooh. I... Whew. I guess the biggest historical inaccuracy was the way they portrayed Egypt. Because this isn't the Egypt of Hellenistic times. You know, the times of, like, Cleopatra VII, or the times of Ptolemy. Um, this is Egypt from, like, thousands of years before that time. This is, like, Egypt during the uh, Battle of Kadesh. So that they do not belong in that time period. Um, that's one thing that Rome 2 did right. It got the Egyptians more accurate. So if you're wondering what that means, it means the uh, Egyptians from Rome 1, they should look, I guess, more like the Macedonians or the, uh, the Seleucids, basically. And what do I think the developers got right? Gosh, as much as I love the game, they didn't really get much right with with Rome 1. That is kind of strange, isn't it? Not a very historically accurate game, but man, it's so fun. It is so fun. And at the moment, I just can't think of what they got right. Tyler Klein. Do I plan on playing other games such as Rome 2 or something more modern? I still enjoy the content though. So again, I have played every Total War game up until Warhammer 2. Even Rome 2, I have, I have probably like a whole year's worth of Rome 2 content. Um, but again, the uh, the the community coordinators of uh, the CA, they for some reason, this is even in an email, they, they told me that they accidentally deleted my, my email from their email list. And unfortunately, after two years of my email not being on their list, I got really disgruntled with that. And so I said some things like, you know, like the new Total War games are crap, I got screwed by some of the CA uh, employees. So those kind of comments, it blacklisted me. Again, I got blacklisted after I got blacklisted. And I think it's unfair to me, and I'm not afraid to, to say something like that. You might think that's arrogant, but these guys really did, uh, in my opinion, they, they, they're the ones who dropped the ball. Uh, but yeah, I, I do play um, other new games. Like, when someone sends me a game that looks really good, I, I will play it, if I can. <laughs> All right, Gara the Last Man asks, "When did I first play Rome Total War?" Um, I've had videos on this subject. I kind of forgot now, but in my previous videos, where I answer that question, I'm a bit more accurate. But I think it was around the time period of 2006 or 2007, because that's when my coworker uh, challenged me to a game of Rome Total War, a game that I never played in my life. But the uh, the fun argument started when he was saying that the Romans would have slaughtered Alexander the Great. And I was like, no way, that's impossible. So he suggested I get Rome to the war so we could duke it out. The very first, uh, I think, one or two games that we played, he destroyed me. Because my friend would not even tell me how to move my units. So I, I bought my troops, and I couldn't even figure out how to move them, let alone charge. So he slaughtered me. But when we, when we met again in a few weeks, I slaughtered him like five or six times. It was pretty pretty sweet. Okay, Edward Blake asks, why do I not do campaign Let's Plays? I do. Um, watch my Imperial Rome campaigns, or watch my Europa Univers Universalis Rome campaigns. I have tried them out. Um, Edward Blake asks, oh wait, I just answered his question. Mike Kang asks, Medieval Battle versus Pixelated Apollo. Man, in my current stage, since I haven't played Medieval 2 in so long, I'd get slaughtered by Pixelated. Um, but w um, when I was playing, I think we we're a, an even match in Medieval 2, I think. Um, we actually met last year or two years ago, me and Pixelated. We met at Disney and we hung out for a bit. I made a video where we just uh, did stupid stuff. So if you want to see that video, check it out. That guy's really tall in person. Plus I'm really short too. Such, such, a, such a nice guy though. Um, Trump Total War asks, do I even lift? I lift this. Shing! Here's a fun little uh, blade I got from from the theme parks. Can't believe they sold something like this. Pretty cool though. I but yeah, I, I am trying to get back into uh, lifting. 
And I believe those are all my YouTube questions, so I can answer my questions for Facebook now. And again, if you like, um, if you want to add me on Facebook, I'll put the link in the description to my Facebook channel. Because on Facebook, I like to, um, you know, share pictures. And for the people that are that are on my Facebook list now, I, I do check out your your pictures and status updates. I just don't really comment on them, but I I do read them from time to time, and it really makes me happy to know that you know a lot of my uh, my YouTube subscribers are doing so much with their lives. Like a lot of my old school viewers who are on my Facebook, man, they they've become soldiers for their countries. They become lawyers. Um, they become really really awesome people and. It just makes me happy to know that I know these people and that they uh, at one time uh, watched my videos. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of the people I add on Facebook. All right, so let's answer these Facebook questions. Andy asks, is Andy great? Answer, yes, he is. <laughs> okay, Andy. Um, I believe there's a church in England called uh, St. Andrew the Great. So to answer your question, uh, yeah, I guess you are great. You're so great they made a church for you. I think that's in the in the UK. I you know he would know because he's actually from the UK. And he says, in all seriousness, what do I do for a living? So again, you know, I like to uh, to punch in, make money, and then punch out. But then I kind of like breathe oxygen after that. So Ozon asks, boxers or briefs? So honestly, both. When I go to sleep, I wear boxers, but when I'm out and about, I like to wear briefs because uh, briefs, they don't get tangled in your pants, whereas uh, boxers, they're so um, they're so loose that I feel like it just adds so much weight in that area, and I, I don't like that feeling. Uh, Benjamin asks, what's my motivation to, well, what was my motivation to start my adventure videos? That's a good question. I always loved adventures, adventure stories, adventure movies. Um, some of my favorite movies would be like um, Hitari, which was John Wayne, The African Queen, which was Humphrey Bogart, um, Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford. Um, I loved those adventure uh, movies, and I always wanted to try something like it and, and show my, my channel. And I thought that by making those kind of videos, I would get you know fellow adventurers to share their experiences with me. So it'd be kind of like an adventurers club. Um, I haven't made any adventure videos in a while, but I, I like to go back and, and make some because uh, my adventures were pretty lame, but I still loved making them. Obviously, I'm not going to be fighting Nazis or exploring, you know, a, a long lost civilization, um, but I, I still like making those kind of videos. And thank you for bringing that up because I really do need motivation to start my adventure videos again. Kristoff asks, Realm Total War Community question for you, Alex. Who is, by your opinion, the best Realm Total War online player of all time? Man, I really don't know that. I feel like there's so many, uh, I've seen so many uh, great Realm Total War players. I feel like once you're at a certain level, anyone can beat anyone in Realm Total War because uh, one mistake can cost you the match right there. So you have to be like completely on your game when you're playing uh, someone on your own level, you know, make really good decisions. So I couldn't really answer who, but I can tell you this much. Once you're at a certain level, you could all be considered the greatest Room Total War player because anyone can beat anyone. Alonzo asks, am I still into ancient history? And do I still read or study it? I, I will always love ancient history. My greatest passions in life are you know, military history, especially Alexander the Great and his successors. Um, I just haven't read anything lately. You know, here, here's my, my books. I've got way more books than this that I, I bought and haven't read yet. So I like to go back, get back into it. I'm also into, uh, into cars a lot, especially late 60s, early 70s cars. Um, but pretty much any kind of car that's interesting, I, I like. But that's going off a tangent there. I, I, I will always love um, ancient history. Again, I, as I said, um, when I was seven, that's when I got into uh, Alexander the Great and playing chess. 
Um, here's a little fun fact, which I mentioned before, but before I was into Alexander the Great, I loved reading about the Spartans. So I was a Spartan first before I became an Alexander the Great file. So I think those are all my questions that I that I listed here. I, I'm, if there are any more than that, I do apologize for not for not getting to it. Um, one of the greatest satisfactions I had when I was popular on YouTube was reading all the comments and actually taking the time to answer every uh, question that I asked or every every comment that was there. Um, sure, there were some bad ones and. When there were bad comments, I, I became kind of a bad person. I reacted negatively, negatively to them. I, I wish I had never done that because there were some people that I did alienate that didn't deserve it. Again, there was a lot more people who did deserve it that when I was affected by it, I took it out on some of the people that weren't being trolls. That when you're reading like hundreds of questions, it's hard to distinguish between troll comments and non-troll comments. When it was when that wasn't happening, I loved to read you know, these, uh, these YouTube comments, but I, I like to see what you guys are doing. And I always liked, you know, talking to people that share the same interests as myself, because there's a lot of people that I know in real life, but these people don't have the same interests. They don't play Total War. Well, except for my coworker that plays Total War. Um, they don't read ancient history. Uh, some do, but not much. These movies that I love, like Alexander, Gladiator, 300, 300 Spartans. You know, I know you guys would probably like those kind of movies, but my friends typically don't, so it's just cool to have you guys, you know, in uh, communication with myself, because I, I feel like, you know, we are the same, so I always thought that was pretty cool. So that's all I want to say. Again, I'll be in Mississippi next month in March, yeah, March, so if you want to meet me and you live in that area, that's the time to do it. I'll be flying out. Here's a little bonus, in case you're asking about the pictures in the background of my video, uh, let me show you some of them. Here's a reprint of, a, of an old poster of Alexander the Great, the movie starring uh, Richard Burton. Very over-the-top theatrical, kind of uh, stage-like, but I love that movie. The dialogue was so awesome in it. Um, I wish it had a bigger budget, though, and uh, more realism, but <laughs> I love watching that movie. So many uh, great moments in it. Uh, this one is uh, Perseus, and I got this from a very famous artist. But this is uh, Perseus on at the Battle of Pydna, when his uh, Thracian scouts came back with the heads of uh, of some Roman, uh, of some other uh, scouts from the Roman side. So they presented their heads to King Perseus, and he was very pleased with what he saw. I don't think he would have been pleased <laughs> later on, though. And here's my favorite movie of all time, Alexander, starring Colin Farrell. You can see it's autographed by uh, Oliver Stone, who was the director of this movie. I met him at Rollins College many years ago. I've also met Val Kilmer, but I didn't get his autograph. I got a picture with him, which, you know, I could probably show that to him. So when I met Val Kilmer, he saw that I had this uh, helmet here. And then he goes, hey, you want to put the helmet on? And I did. I got a free picture out of it. So that's me wearing the Alexander the Great helmet. And remember, he played uh, King Philip, who was Alexander's father in the Alexander movie. And then finally, here's another um, uh, print from a very cool military history artist. And this is uh, King Pyrrhus. And if you're wondering what that medal was around my, my neck, this was from uh, Burbank, California, when I was the captain of the uh, of the American uh, Total War Arena team, and we, we took on the uh, the other arena team, which consisted of Lionheart and some others. I think the first time I played Arena, I had no experience with the game. All the Americans who played in Germany had no experience. So that was kind of crap, but uh, fast forward to later on in California, oh, I had more experience and uh, we did pretty well.